Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving, that's right, you guessed it, gravitation and conservation of energy. And we're going to use a real world example. This is the L cross satellite. L cross stands for Lunar Crater Observation Sensing Satellite. It was launched in June 2009 to determine whether or not there was hydrogen and therefore possibly water in the polar regions of the moon. And this is the actual satellite. This is the spent Centaur booster rocket. The spent Centaur booster rocket was allowed to fall and collide with the moon and it sent up a plume of debris and then about four or five minutes later the L cross satellite flew through that plume of debris and analyzed it using its, all of its onboard sensors to determine that there was approximately one or two percent water within that plume. Okay, and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to determine using conservation of energy, mechanical energy, the velocity of this Centaur booster rocket when it struck the moon. Okay, it's going to be really good. Determine the velocity of the spent Centaur booster rocket when it struck the surface of the moon. We are going to use conservation of energy, total mechanical energy, and that basically tells us that the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential plus the final kinetic energy. Now, we are given the following information for this problem. Now, this is not really something we're given. This is the constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meter squared kilogram squared. That's the gravitational constant G. Now, we're given, we know that the mass of the moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. The radius of the moon is 1,738 kilometers. The mass of the Centaur booster rocket when it struck the moon was 890 kilograms. The height from which it was released when it was in its orbit, when it was turned and allowed to fall towards the moon, was 20,380 kilometers. And when it did that, it had an initial velocity of 1.28 kilometers per second. Now, you will see, we can calculate the initial potential. We can calculate the initial kinetic. We can calculate the final potential, but we don't know and we will not be able to calculate the final kinetic, but we can so we can calculate these three, set that equal to this, and then solve for the velocity, because as you know, the kinetic energy is one half m. We know the m, the mass, and we're going to solve, therefore, for the velocity, because it's one half mv squared, okay? So let's get started and do that. We're just going to go one, two, three, solve, uh, uh, calculate these three values, and then set it equal to the initial, to the final kinetic energy. We're going to start, of course, with the initial potential. This is the equation we use for the potential energy minus, don't forget the minus sign, minus G, M1, M2, divided by R. Okay, and we'll go through all that stuff right now. The initial potential is G, is the gravitational constant. Don't forget the minus sign. The gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, times M1, which is the mass of the moon times M2, which is the mass of the spent Centaur booster rocket, then that is divided by R. Now, in this case, R, <clears throat> I shouldn't say in this case, in all cases, R is the distance from the center of mass of one object to the center of mass of the other object. In this case, we have to add the radius of the moon plus the height that the object is above the surface of the moon, and that's 1738 plus 20,380 gives us 22,118 kilometers from the center of mass of the moon, the radius of the moon plus the height above the moon's surface, and I multiply that times 10 to the third meters, because this has to be in meters. This is 1,000, because one kilometer has 1,000 meters, because this constant has the units of newtons, uh, kilograms squared, meters squared. All right? So we have to have that uh, in meters, just like the masses have to be in kilograms. And if you do that math pretty simply, you get that the initial potential energy, don't forget the negative sign, is minus 1.97 times 10 to the 8 joules. Okay, there's the initial potential. Now we're going to get the initial kinetic. The kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. That means it's 1 half times the mass times the velocity of the rocket. This is the mass of the booster rocket. This is the velocity, its initial velocity. Don't forget to square it, 1 half 890 times 1.28 times 10 to the third. Again, meters has to be converted to meters so that you get the joules out of it. And that means the initial kinetic energy was 7.29 times 10 to the eighth 
joules. Now we have the initial values, now we're going to calculate the final potential energy. The final potential energy, we use the same equations, all the values are the same, the mass of the moon, the mass of the rocket, because that's what we're talking about, gravitational constant, but now this time, because we're calculating the potential energy when the Centaur booster rocket, which is spent, strikes the surface of the moon, we just use the radius of the moon. It's not zero, it's not zero, it's the, actually the distance from the center of the moon out to the rocket, which is now at the surface. So that is the radius of the moon, once again converted into meters. You divide that, multiply and divide, and you get that the final potential energy of the spent Centaur booster rocket is minus 2.51 times 10 to the ninth joules. Okay, now we know the initials, we know the final potential, but we don't know this. So what we're going to do on the next slide is we're going to rearrange this equation to solve for the final kinetic energy, which basically means we're going to subtract the final potential energy from both sides. So now we have the final kinetic energy is equal to the initial values minus the final potential. Don't forget the minus sign. We're going to have a lot of minus signs. We just plug the values in. That means that the final kinetic energy is equal to minus 1.97 times 10 to the 8 joules, plus the initial kinetic, plus, okay, 7.29 times 10 to the 8 joules. Now, this is minus. We have minus. This minus sign is this minus sign, and this is a negative sign because the final potential was minus 2.51 times 10 to the 9th joules. Okay, you add all those up. Don't forget a minus times a minus or a minus a minus is a plus. Okay, so don't forget your negative signs. And then you get that the final kinetic energy of the spent Centaur booster rocket when it struck the surface of the moon was 3.04 times 10 to the ninth joules. Okay? So now we know the final kinetic, and we're going to use this equation because we know the kinetic. One half is one half. We know the mass, and we can solve for the velocity. Let's do that. I'm going to take this equation. Now, I did a couple things with this equation to solve it for the velocity. I did it all in one step. We should be able to do that now. First thing was I multiplied by 2 to get rid of the half. Then I divided by m to bring the m over. And then I took the square root of both sides. And I get that the velocity, this is actually the final velocity, is equal to 2, the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which we have here, divided by its mass. You just plug those in, 2 times 3.5. 4 times 10 to the 9th joules divided by 890 take the square root of that and you get that the final velocity the velocity when the booster rocket struck the surface of the moon was 2.61 times 10 to the third meters per second which is 2.61 kilometers per second that's pretty fast and that means that that is approximately 5,800 miles per hour Okay, so there you go. That is a real world problem. I think it's kind of interesting. It's mostly math and just keeping everything straight, but it's a good application of gravitation that we've been talking about, kinetic potential, and conservation of energy. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Of course, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, please don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. I'll cross.